what's good everybody welcome to another episode of the slightly warped podcast i'm rick joined as always by big show big show how are you i'm all right i survived the great eclipse of 2024 a little disappointed i didn't gain no superpowers but i'm i'm upset because you know why is that i didn't get any good pictures of it well, it's kind of hard to, um, I got, I mean, I didn't, well, I guess you probably got all that fancy cameras. Cause aren't you like a photographer? I am, but you still need different equipment to really get a yeah. good picture of the eclipse. I mean, I've got some camera phone pictures and things like that, but it's just not the same without some good pro equipment. One of these days, maybe. Well, I guess if I'm going to wait for another eclipse, it's, what, 20 years, so I'm going to have to, uh, I've well, got 20 on this years side, to sharpen my skills. On this side of the planet, yes. I think the next one on the other side of the planet is, like, 2027, so you could always take a trip. Hey, there you go. Might as well do something with that fun money. Hey, uh, maybe we'll, we'll podcast live from the eclipse in 2027. Now, wait, before we commit to that, I need to find out where the on the other side of the world that is, because if you're going to put me in a <laughs> war-torn country, I'm good, bro. I'll just wait until it comes back around this way. Chicken. I don't take some good pictures be held hostage. <laughs> the United States does not negotiate with terrorists. We will not be letting him come back. Well, they obviously do. D didn't we give up like a terrorist to get back our basketball player? I don't know what we gave up to uh, get her back, but. He was some major arms dealer or something like that. Like he was a player in the game. That's why everybody was in the, you know, had their, was upset about it because they say we gave up too much. I mean, for real though, how do you define too much though? Because. I mean, we wasn't doing anything with him. And I think well, he they, was. In, I mean, he was in prison, and he wasn't able to to do any more business. You know, now he's free to. Well, from what I understand, know. he got a lot of enemies, so his freedom may not be free. Uh, true. Speaking of enemies, I want to talk about this first topic because this man has some enemies now. Uh, I came across this uh, article that said how an Oklahoma man double-crossed the Mexican cartel with knockoff guns. Bro, you got to be a special kind of stupid to do this. Anyway, like it says here, uh, Andrew Scott Pearson's ordeal started on a remote Oklahoma farm and ended in a cartel hot zone after Mexican officers surrounded him and marched him out of Mexico. His journey from America's heartland to life in a volatile border town started in 2012 with his rise to prominence as a gun expert and a cartoon go to guy, a cartel go to guy. Say that 10 times real fast. Uh, it ended with his public downfall two weeks before Christmas in 2018 in the middle of a suburban street. Uh, officers wearing black tactical gear and face masks surrounded him with machine guns inside his gated community in the city of Nuevo Lardo, Laredo, excuse me, uh, five miles from the Laredo, Texas border. Uh, the police put Pearson, who was then age 43, in the back of their truck the night of December 10th, 2018, and drove him to the border. From there, the policeman pulled and tugged Pearson halfway across the uh, gateway to the Americas International Bridge that stretches across the Rio Grande and uh, their toes nearing the yellow line on the pavement that marks the actual divide of nations. And uh, Pearson, topping 500 pounds, then walked to the uh, American side, guided by waiting officers with U.S. Customs Border Protection. Um, an officer told Pearson that he was under arrest on a fugitive warrant obtained by the U.S. Bureau of uh, Alcohol and Tobacco. Oh, the ATF got him. Yeah. And uh, Pearson jeered, you go into Mexico and you have people drug out by the army for that? Question mark. 
yada 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 anyway um he talked about the cartel uh supervisors uh love of blinged out guns with uh gold triggers and how he ordered a boss designer versace gun grips i can see that bro i can see that um he and other u.s uh criminals played a key role in helping cartels thrive by arming them uh so you know not just a special kind of stupid but special kind of evil when you're you know, what do they call that? Warmongering? Is that what that's called? When you help mm -hmm. him? Anyway, he knew, uh, long story short, he gave out counterfeit guns a lot to a lot of the cartel people. And he knew if the cartel found out he was giving them counterfeits, that would be bad for him. So it sounded like he was happy to be back on the uh, United States side of the border. But uh, can you really be happy if, you're going to be uh, a hunted man for the rest of your life? Mm, especially in that part. So many moons ago, when I say many, probably about 15 years ago. You're not about to say you used to deal with guns. No, 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 no. Okay. But okay. I did. I, I, dis, <laughs> I dispatched about a half a dozen drivers in Laredo, Texas. Uh -huh. And I'd have, to, I'd have to go down there once a year. And Laredo and Nueve Laredo is right across the Rio Grande. But um, that is some very, it, it's a bad part of the world, man. Like it is, it is very high crime rate on both. Um, you have the original Mexican cartel, you know, the big dogs. And then you have the younger, the younger kids. They're the ones that back then ran uh, you know, Nueva Laredo, and they basically ran their stuff straight up I-35 because you can run I-35 all the way up to Canada, and then mm -hmm. I-35 runs you right smack in to Laredo. Uh, but I remember back then, um, it was this new, I want to, I, I can't remember the name. They're not the MS-20, or I forget the name of the young, of the young guns that were there, but they were having an issue with the actual cartel um and the mexican president the leader of the cartel at the time told the mexican president hey you need to get these young cats in in line or we will and the mexican president basically said there's nothing i i could do uh we're trying but you know but we, we, we're just outgunned and and the leader at the time of the cartel said okay cool and like the next week there was like two dozen heads on the president's uh front lawn damn of of the younger generation kids that were in this mexican gang so that's all in nueve laredo right there and it literally is like five minute walk across the border when i was down there with my guys they'd always say hey let's go over let's cross the border to party and i'm like uh no thank you very much if you're in laredo Texas, you have to ride around with a pistol in your in your in your lap it, it's mm. that bad I, I always had my, you know, my drivers there that they always took me everywhere and told me where not to go. And, and they pretty much protected me at that time. But yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not a place for the, for the meek. I tell you what, uh, now keep in mind, he is serving time right now, but it's not a question of if it's a question of when, uh, these brothers don't yeah, forget. He, oh, and he'll get caught in prison. They'll, I mean, the cartel, they got cartel people in the prison. He'll get caught. I mean, even unless he, he said, stays in protective custody, you all you know, the whole time. Even he said in the article, the life expectancy of somebody who double crosses the cartel is nil. So oh, he yeah. knows. He knows. Yeah, but he's probably, especially if he has all that uh, information of who's who and high, you know, profile targets he'll probably get some sort of uh, witness protection type thing that is possible but i still wouldn't want to be in his shoes no spend the rest of your life looking over your shoulder mm -mm. i'm good i'm good um speaking of heist this one I'm not going to say it was funny, but it was kind of funny. Um, 
it's called the perfect heist question mark uh, inside the seamless, sophisticated, stealthy L.A. theft that netted up to thirty million dollars. Uh, now, federal and local law enforcement officials uh, had dis descended on a uh, nondescript warehouse in the San Fernando Valley where one of the biggest heists in Los Angeles history occurred on Easter Sunday. Um, officials and crime experts said the operation appears to have been highly sophisticated with the burglars making off with what sources estimate to be between 20 and 30 million. They targeted a uh, Garter World building on Roxford Street. I, I don't know anything about Garter World or anything like that. Uh, it's accessing a vault where huge sums of cash were stored. And uh, the FBI and the Los Angeles Police Department had released a little information about the heist, and they have not announced any suspects uh, in the massive theft. My question is, well, well, let me before I get to that question. Let me uh, read on here. Um, the uh, Canada-based security company, where the building is, uh, didn't respond uh, to any requests for comments, which they shouldn't because they should be embarrassed. Um, it's unclear again how much cash was stored in the facility and whether the thieves took it all. Damn, if they got almost thirty million. It really doesn't matter about whether they got it all half whatever they 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 got plenty now how they how did they get in they said the burglars appeared to enter through the roof so they did it mission impossible style tom cruise style through the roof um at least one alarm was triggered during the crime but it was not connected to local law enforcement according to the uh, source familiar with the investigation in any case the thieves were able to get in and get out without anybody knowing about it. Uh, there was also a hole in the side of the building covered by a piece of plywood. And um, law enforcement source confirmed uh, to the Times that there was an effort to breach the side, but it was not clear how the area was used in the heist. Okay, so these guys, I don't want to say it was pro style, but they knew enough. My question is, why was this alarm not connected to uh, law enforcement? You're a company that you store cash. Why are you not connected to law enforcement? And and at the very you smell least, that smell that I smell inside job. Right. I mean, <laughs> think about it. They they knew. Whoever got in, they knew they could get in, they could get out. And the roof, bro, I mean, you know, they are they are reenacting some serious action movie fantasies right there. That that's well, you're what they just, were doing. you're assuming that they went in with the rope and destroyed, you know, went through lasers and all no. Yeah, no, they they it wasn't like that. Because if no, a company I mean, doesn't, that's... if a company doesn't have their alarm connected to law enforcement, you can just walk down the steps and get what you want. But who said it wasn't connected? I mean, I know that said it was, but who said they didn't connect it? You know what I mean? Like the person that was inside worked in, made sure it wasn't going to call. Yeah, yeah. You I know, mean... I don't necessarily think. I don't necessarily believe that their high tech security just failed. And this and these <laughs> these. <laughs> This these people were so good that they were undetected. Now, obviously, going through the roof is pretty smart because nobody's going to see you while you're, you know, getting but, in and out. But where do you go from there? Did they have a chopper on standby? Oh no, they probably climbed down, and got to a car, and drove away. But I'm talking about the whole process of making the hole into the roof and getting it. You know, nobody's seeing all that grunt work. True. And to add to that, I believe that the hole in the side of the building, it was just a ruse. Possibly. You know, I, I don't believe anybody came in, came in or went out through that, uh, through that hole in the side. I think it was like, hey, we'll just let them look down there. We going in from the top, we coming out up top. True. Or, or maybe be, that's, it could be vice versa. Or maybe that's how they disconnected the security. 
went to mm. the side. Yeah, man. And who, I mean, but if, if it was the inside job, if they if they slipped the uh, person that helped them out a little five mil present, um, I mean, you know, if they if they were so good and they don't get caught, you know, they they deserve that thirty mil. I I can't I can't not agree, even though that's against the law. And we are law-abiding citizens here on the Slightly Warped Podcast. But I'm just saying, Big Show's not wrong. Right? I mean, with all that work, I'd want my money, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I smell, I smell that, this is what I think. I don't think that whoever broke in actually stole that some amount of money. But that's what the company's saying, because they're probably insured. That's where I was going to close this. Yeah, so that's right where I was going because the company isn't out thirty million because they're right. insured. So that's you know that's kind of let's say you know the, oh my god you know they stole five hundred thousand dollars still a lot of money we'll just say oh but we're gonna say they stole thirty million you know who knows now I'm not an advocate of breaking the law but if you're gonna be a thief. Don't rob your fellow man. Hit up big business. They're insured. Depending on what big business, because, you know, let's say it's a retail business. You're going to end up paying for it anyway. That will just raise the prices and the taxes. Uh, yeah. Shoot, that happens anyway. Every time they raise minimum wage, everything goes up. True. I mean, but they'll definitely raise it and make you pay for it, pay it back. They'll be insured and still make their money back and be covered. I'm going to need somebody to come over and rob RJK Productions. But <laughs> it's not an invite, folks. No, no, it's not. Hey. But good uh, on them. I, hopefully they'll catch the guys. Yeah, I mean. Or gals. One thing about these kind of thefts, somebody's always going to get caught because somebody's going to be stupid. I don't know. D.B. Cooper did wasn't caught. Unless them trees caught him on that fall down. Never know. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, y'all don't know what we're talking about. Right above my head on YouTube, it's the link. We did a D.B. Cooper episode, so better check it out. All right, now to the serious, serious, serious part of this Warped podcast. Um, I want to talk about athletes who wear their religion on their sleeve, so to speak. They, they know God, they love God, they profess their love of God and all the things he does for him, for them, excuse me. Um, and what is it with people that, for whatever reason, seem to have a problem with it? Um, I was, I was reading something. It was, I think it was on my Facebook, and, and I don't still have it. But um, an athlete had thanked God, and several people had. Got oh I know what it was it was from the women's final four the other day mm -hmm. it was the coach actually that thanked God and, and so many people just came down on her and, and one of the thing is okay, here's one of them I'm gonna read to you hate when winners point and praise God for the win it wasn't a war therefore God hates the team that lost and probably pray just as dot 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 okay why are you comparing it with war first of all um now you correct me if i'm wrong i'm paraphrasing big show but um in all things thank god is that not in the scriptures uh in everything i mean god i don't thanks. know I don't know if that's the verbatim for word, but yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Yeah, so it's not about a war. 
you don't have to wait till something devastating happens and you get out unscathed to thank God. You can thank God just for simply waking up to see another day. You can thank God for the food on your table. So yeah, you can thank God that your team won the game. You put in a years and years of work to get to that point and you climbed to the mountain and you got to the mountaintop. That's physically demanding. That's mentally demanding. And the, some of the people around you suffer from it because you can't do the things that you want to do because you have devoted your life and your livelihood to a game. And yeah, and that's what it is. It's a game. But once you reach that, that point, I believe that you have every right to thank God because God gave you the ability to get to said point. And, you know, for people that don't like that, you don't understand what you're talking about. Again, in everything, give thanks. You know, if I can thank God that I'm able to make it to work every day without any problems, why can't somebody thank God that they were able to overcome a 10-point deficit and win the game? It isn't about him hating the loser. Because, again, in everything, give thanks. The loser should still thank God that he or she got to the big game and use it as a learning experience maybe for the next big game. And also, you know, closing it out because I don't want to, you know, just run this over, but also, how do I want to put this? Um, the reason why you don't hear the losers say that is because they usually don't interview the losers right after the game out of respect you let them you know process what just happened and maybe get to them the next day a couple days later etc i mean yes everything you said is true but i think i think we're kind of going off topic just a little bit we're not we're not giving excuses as to why it's okay to praise God. The question was, why do people get put off by people doing it? I mean, what kind of problem with would you have with somebody doing it? Okay. Who who let's let's just go back biblically. How many people had a problem with Jesus and what he was saying back in the day in the Bible? Oh yeah, there were a lot of people that had problems with it. Why why did they have a problem with him? Well, I'm sure they had their reasons. I mean, they, they it's the didn't same thing. Him. Yeah. It's the same answer. It's the same answer for these guys. You know, it's, it, it's that, uh, it's that main subject that we talk about off and on, you know, that evil, uh, the opposite of, spiritual spirituality having a relationship with god the opposite of that is just blatantly in our faces every day yeah I mean, and, I, 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 now, now i'm touching more or less on the people that say well god doesn't care about a game that's not but that's a but that's the same people that are that you know that they had an issue with jesus back when he was walking the earth i mean they had the same issues. Obviously, they weren't playing a game, but, you know, who cares if you can turn wine into water or water into wine or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Big deal, you know, that type of thing, you know? Go to, uh, to the Garden of Eden, you know? Why, you know, Eve, why, if God loves you so much, why can't you eat the apple? It's just an apple. What's the big deal? You know, it's everybody has an issue with that, with that or not everybody people have true. the issue yeah. but just just as it is okay for said coach to thank the lord for whatever it is also okay for those people to have a problem with it yeah it it is okay i mean you know it would really benefit from us to one day host the show and have an atheist on here I would really like to hear their genuine insight as to why they don't believe or why they criticize 
someone who does believe, you know, just to get into that mindset, not necessarily to debate, but to better understand, I guess, because, you know, I'm not one to debate if I feel one way and someone else feels another, hey, may joy go with you and peace behind you. I'm not going to try to change your mind. You're either going to change it or you're not. But that's not what the Bible says. About what? Bible doesn't say just let them, you know, oh, that's how you think about God. Oh, that's all right. You know, God oh, bless no. you. See you later. The Bible says to try to teach them, share with them. Right. But so that's so so there you go. You can do that, but if they don't want to listen, what can you do? Well, if they don't want to listen, then you're not going to have a conversation to begin with. But if you're actually having a conversation, i.e. slash debate, you know, it's okay. It's it's you can have a debate with somebody that doesn't believe the exact same thing you do, and you both can communicate your points without, you know, being uh butt heads to each other not saying that you were but i mean it just takes the right two people to have a conversation yeah and just like that atheist isn't going to change your mind you know you can't expect to change that atheist mind however you know he's going to give you facts and or his facts in his mind or her mind of why she believes or he believes that way and then you're yeah. going to be like well what about xyz and maybe have them look at it from a different point of view, or maybe they say something that makes you look at it from a different point of view. This is true. I mean, you know. I'm, I mean, people are put off and offended just because they feel, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, they feel... Uh, it's okay to thank God for certain things, but not for all things. You know, would, would any, I mean, I'm sure majority of the people would get up if somebody said, man, I want to thank Satan for this victory, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. I mean, would, would you be upset about it or would you just not agree with it? I wouldn't agree with it. That's for damn sure. But uh, right. But would you be upset about it? No, I wouldn't be upset about it. I mean, I'd be like, "You do you, bro. You wrong." Would you be but put you off? You. Would you be put off or offended that they say something like that? No, this day and age, with the things that people do, it does not offend me. Uh, I guess making my point. Uh, a little bit more clear the last line from the last person that wrote something in here said i hate it when a winner says they serve an unbelievable god wonder why god selected them to win others to lose question mark uh but when a team loses i don't hear about them serving an unbelievable god that's where i go with my statement previously about you know that's not how that works. You don't hear from the losing team because they're hurt right now. That doesn't mean that they don't serve an unbelievable God. And it doesn't mean that they won't say that. So they're more or less twisting it. True, but that's from a non-believer. I mean, somebody that says God's not believable, that's just a non-believer. Yeah. You know? But if you're out there and you think that way, Hey, come on the show. We can talk about it. Come on the show with respect and an open mind. Yes. <clears throat> and willing Definitely. to communicate respectfully. Hey, you know, we'll listen to your words. You listen to ours. We may not be able to come together, but at least we'll have an understanding. Yes, sir. And while I'm at it, before we get out of here, uh, if... You'd like to come on the show for any topic. You know, you got something that you want to talk about. You got something that uh, you want to promote. Hit us up. Uh, you can email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Uh, you can hit us up on our DMs on our respective social platforms. Um, any uh, kind of contact is encouraged. And, you know, if you just want to shoot the breeze with us, you know, we love talking sports and stuff like that. Come on in. 
you know, it doesn't have to be a, you know, uh, 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 conversation, you know, we, we love funny stuff too. You know, you want to talk about movies, you want to talk about entertainment. This is the Slightly Warped Podcast. We talk about anything and everything. No topic is off limits. No topic. All right. That's all the time I've got. You got anything you want to go out with, show? No, nothing in particular. Just, uh, you know, I want to thank God for this show. I want to thank God for this victory uh, that we got through here and that, uh, you know, we live to see another day and hopefully we'll be around next week to have another show. Amen. Hey, I do have one more question I want to ask you real quick. Uh, Cause I Please. just want your, uh, your, we got six minutes. Tell me, cause I'm hearing all this stuff about, you know, people that are upset because they think that the chiefs or, and or Royals might move particularly mm -hmm. the chiefs. And I've heard it a few times. I don't think it's going to happen because you know, it's just not. The Hunt family is here, and they are not going anywhere. The Hunt family is based out of Dallas, but go ahead. I know they are, but <laughs> there is there is a team in Dallas. There's actually two teams in Texas. Don't need a third there. Uh, could probably sustain it because you have three teams in New York, so I'm sure you could have three teams in Texas. You got three teams in California. I get that. But uh, this is a non-Chiefs fan, just from what I see with the atmosphere and everything that goes around the city, I cannot fathom them up and uh, uprooting this franchise to another city. Your thoughts? The Chiefs won't leave the Kansas City area. They'll leave Jackson County. They'll, if if the Chiefs were to leave Jackson County, they're going to go out towards the Legends where the racetrack is. That's where they'll be. They'll be the Wyandotte County Chiefs, which is like 10 minutes from my house. So that's awesome. The Royals, on the other hand, they're probably on their way to Nashville. Mm. And... I understand why the Jackson County voters voted the way they voted. Um, and the main reason is because the Chiefs and the Royals did a super crappy job on putting out the information of their overall plan. So it's like, here, let's vote yes for more taxes, but we're really not going to know what it is. And you're just going to tell us as we go along. No, I'm not writing that check no more. I mean, you have to put out a credit application just to go to a Chiefs game anymore. So you need to tell me some more stuff. Yeah, I get it. We won three Super Bowls. That's awesome. Yes. And we're supporting you 110%. The stadium's never not full. You know, we're paying $200 to park. You know, so let's let's get a better plan. I, you know, the, the, both of those uh, leases are up, I think, in 2031. 2030, 2031, I think it is. So they got some time. They'll get back on the vote. They'll get back on the ballot. And once they have a better plan, I'm sure Jackson County will most likely vote it in. I think the Royals want to leave Jackson County, period. They want they want to go to downtown Kansas City. That's where they want to be. Um, where there's basically but, just two ways in and two ways out. That's going to be a nightmare for games. Well, there's a ton of ways in and out. I know right I'm there. paraphrasing, but the, I mean the congestion will be there on game day. Not the they'll open it all. I mean, no more than it is when you go to a Chiefs game. I mean, uh, I seventy is is a parking lot going there and back. But uh, you know they're going to put it, the, their plans were to put it at the old K Kansas City Star Building, uh, which is like down the street from the Sprint Center. You know, and obviously they're going to knock out a bunch of stuff and put in new parking and blah, 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 blah. You know, it, if the Royals don't get what they want, I do. I could see them packing up and moving, period, whether it's to another part of the city or out of the city altogether. I do not foresee the Chiefs leaving the metro area. They could be the Kansas City, Kansas Chiefs instead of the Kansas City, Missouri Chiefs. But they'll still be the Kansas City Chiefs. 
All right. Y'all heard it here first from Big Show. Show, take his own out of here. Well, thank y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You know, that's the only way we get paid. Just kidding. We don't get paid at all. We do this stuff for free. For you, for your entertainment. But we will give out our emails in case you want to drop us a line. Venmo accounts, Cash App. We take all that. Appreciate y'all watching. Be sure to tell the people that you love, you love them. Tomorrow's not promised. See you next week. See ya.